Well, good evening. Welcome to our Good Friday service here at Living Word Fellowship. We're glad that you're with us. We just worship with us tonight. This is love, this is love, a holy heart was sacrificed, this is love, this is love, I bow down.
at this time, Karen Hollingshead is going to come and sing the old rugged cross. his glory above to bear it on dark Calvary to the old rugged cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share so I cherish the old rugged cross to my trophies at last I I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday. I'll exchange it someday. I'll exchange it someday. Good
Arschlamm. Hey, good evening, and thanks for being with us as we honor our Savior tonight. I to, again, I want to thank our praise and worship team, our sound and video techs, uh, and as well as Karen Hollingshead for just bringing that beautiful song, The Old Rugged Cross. And that's going to be our subject matter tonight. We're going to be taking a look at what the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ provided once and for all for mankind. And so... Uh, in Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11, we're taught that the life of the flesh is in the blood and that it is the blood that makes atonement for our sin. And then the writer of the book of Hebrews shares that it's Jesus' blood that purchased our eternal redemption and therefore it is Jesus' blood that made atonement for the sins of mankind, making us once again one with God. That which was separate has now become one. Through the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ, everyone who has ever lived and who will ever live has an opportunity to be at peace with God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. When we talk about our punished prince tonight, we're talking about a miraculous work. We're talking about something that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit have been planning for centuries, and now we come to the culmination of it. Calvary. We see hundreds of scriptures that have been fulfilled in the life of Jesus, and now we come to this very, very crucial point in him going and suffering for the sins of all of mankind. And there's miracles that are in the blood of Jesus, and that's what I want to emphasize with the time that I have remaining tonight. There are miracles that are available to you tonight because of the blood of Jesus. And when I talk about a miracle, I'm talking about God. I'm talking about God himself divinely intervening and coming and doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. And it could only be done through his son, Jesus Christ. And thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the blood. And we're going to learn tonight how significant this sacrifice is, the suffering of our Savior, that it was not in vain, but it purchased something for us, eternal redemption, forgiveness. And so let's begin by looking into the book of Hebrews chapter 2. I want to start in the 14th verse. It says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself, talking about Jesus, likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, purchasing the sins of God's people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are being tempted. As we continue to read in the book of Hebrews, as we lay our foundation for tonight's subject matter about our punished prince and about the miracles that would be brought into the world because of Jesus Christ, I want to pick up in the ninth chapter in the 11th verse. It says, but Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation not with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption 
For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the puring of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? In chapter 10, we read in verse 5, Therefore when he, talking about Jesus, came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you had no pleasure. And then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do your will, O God. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offering for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. And then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that will we have sanctified and been made whole through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. One more reading out of the same chapter, a few verses here. The 19th verse says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to our confession of hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. God has done something once and for all through the sacrifice of his son. God has purchased something. He has paid a ransom note. He has done what we could not do. On the cross, all the sins, past, present, and future, of every person that has or will ever live were nailed to the cross. All the handwritings, all the ordinances were against us. But Jesus went to the cross on our behalf he took the wrath of our sin, the punishment of our sin, the suffering of our sin. And upon that cross, he gave his life's blood. It's declared in the gospels, greater love has no man than he laid down his life for his friends. And then also Paul wrote to the church at Rome these eternal words. For scarcely for a good man would someone die. Yet even perchance for a righteous, some would give, give their life. But God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He poured out his blood. He poured out his life for us on Calvary. He didn't hold back. He demonstrated the love that God has for us. And that love is an eternal love, an everlasting love. And that love was demonstrated through Jesus Christ. Let me talk to you about the miracle working power of Jesus' blood because that Blood never loses its power. And that was pure blood, spotless blood, holy blood. That blood was shed for you and I. It removed our sin. It didn't just cover our sins like the blood of the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament. No, this blood cleansed our conscience from evil works, removed our sins from us as far as the east is from the west has made a way into the presence of God where there was no way. This blood is miracle working. It's powerful. It's eternal. It's everlasting. And it was shed once and for all. It was shed for you. There's the miracle of redemption. This blood bought us back. God did it legally. He met the demands of justice that were against humanity. And he paid the ransom note that was held. Thank God for the blood. There's a miracle of having access into the presence of God and bold access. Why is this so important? Because in previous days, in previous times, there was only one person that could go into the Holy of Holies. But now the Holy of Holies has come and lives in us. We have access into the presence of God, not based on our behavior, but based on the blood of Jesus Christ. Scripture said it's a new and living way that we can come to the throne of God. There is the miracle of a clean and pure conscience before God. If you were to talk to God about your sin, 
he would not talk to you about it because it's been tossed away. There is no past for you if you've come to Christ. Old things are passed away. All there is is new. God will only talk to you about the new things that he has done for you through the blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't it time that you also moved away from your past? Isn't it time that you quit punishing yourself over those past mistakes? The blood of Jesus Christ is miracle working because it cleanses us. It cleanses us. There's no remembrance of sin because of the blood of Jesus Christ. For those who have confessed Christ, there's only a new life and a new beginning. There's the miracle of a sanctified life. And once again, when I talk about a miracle, I'm talking about God divinely intervening on behalf of humanity. A sanctified life means that God has set us apart for himself. We're now his own special people. We've been marked by the glory of God, by the goodness of God. All New Testament believers have now been made new creatures and priests and kings unto their God. What a beautiful miracle that is. We have the miracle of a new covenant, and this new covenant is a new and better covenant based on new and better promises because of a perfect sacrifice, the blood of the Lamb. We have the number six, miracle of a better blessing. We are blessed and live a blessed life through faith in the completed work of Jesus Christ. New and better promises, you bet, because it's perfect blood. And then the last miracle that I want to bring to your attention, that our punished prince provided for us on Calvary's tree, is the miracle of a defeated enemy. Jesus' blood destroyed the power of the devil and the fear of death that he brought upon humanity. You know, for those who know Christ, when they pass from this life, they pass into his presence. When we say goodbye to this world, we say hello to our Savior. That's a miracle. God has made a way for every person. God has provided salvation for every individual. The blood of Jesus has paid the way. I want to encourage you, wherever you're at tonight, to take a moment right now and just thank the Lord for the blood of Jesus Christ. Just go ahead, right where you're at. Thank him for the blood. Thank him for the miracle working power. Thank him for the redemption. Thank him for the sanctified life. Thank him for full access into his presence. Thank him for all of his promises. Thank him that the devil's defeated. Thank him. Thank him. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. I want to share also with those who are watching, perhaps you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. One of the things that I love about Jesus is his humility. It's one of his most endearing qualities. He humbled himself and went to the cross, suffered on the cross, took the shame that came with the cross, the sin, the separation from his father, forsaken by his father so you and I could be reunited. God loves you. If you ever question God's love, just look at the cross. The cross is a symbol of Christianity. Isn't that interesting? One beam goes towards God. The other beam goes towards humanity. One goes upward. One goes outward. There's an old song talks about Jesus. He came from heaven to earth to show us the way. He's an awesome God. He wants to be your savior. It can happen tonight. The blood of Jesus has not lost its power. If you're a sinner in need of a savior, I want to lead you in a confession of salvation. For scripture says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord would be saved. That if you confess Christ, before men, he'll confess you before his Father, which is in heaven. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ, now is the time. Now is the appointed day. Don't say tomorrow. No, right now is the time. I want to lead you in this confession. Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. I believe that he's your son, 
that he died on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for taking away my sins. I confess you as my Lord, and I accept you tonight as my Savior. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Make me new. Thank you for your blood and the miracles that I will experience because of your blood. Thank you that you remove my sin. Thank you that you make heaven my home. Thank you for loving me. I love you. I accept you. Amen. If you just accepted Jesus Christ for the first time, we celebrate that decision with you, and so do all the angels in heaven. This is what Good Friday is all about. Welcome to the family of God. Please go to our website. It's lwfknoxville.com. At the top of that page, you'll see an About Us tab. Click that. Go down to the contact information. Fill it out. Let us know the decision that you made for Jesus. Give us your address. We're going to send you a Bible along with other resources that will help you get started in this new life in Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome into the joy of God's salvation. Thank you so much for responding to this invitation to come to Jesus Christ. For our LWF family, thank you for your faithful support of the ministry. Thank you for your prayers for our nation, for our leaders. Thank you for supporting this work, both with your presence, your prayers, and with your finances. God bless you richly. I also want to share that we have some resources in these times that we want to make available to everyone. We have a little book called God's Medicine, as well as a CD that is filled with healing scriptures. If you'd like either one of these resources, just get in contact with us here at the church. And you can do that by phone, 641-828-7119. We also have tracks that are available. This is a great time to be sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We have a Max Lucado track. It's called The Message of Hope 316. Also another track by Max Lucado that talks about he did this just for us. A God Loves Us track because God does love us. And then we have a book by Rick Warren, What on Earth Am I Here For? If you're out there and you're wondering, what in the world am I even here for? What in the world's going on? This is a great book that will begin to answer that question. God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you. And we look forward to that time very soon when we're going to be together in his presence. But until then, we walk by faith and not by sight. Please join us for our closing song with our praise and worship team. God bless you. Are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for and drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar.
Sunday morning at 10 o'clock.